My name is uh, Samir Nicolas Sadi. I'm an architect and a photographer, architecture photographer, and founder of Arcade, uh, acronym in French for Atelier de Recherche et de Communication sur l'architecture uh, durable et l'environnement. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, event. And uh, the title of my presentation is In Search of Architecture Without Architects. In fact, uh, when I was studying architecture in the 70s, uh, we were obsessed with big names architects like Mies van der Rohe, Frank Lloyd Wright, I.M. Pei. And one day I came across a, a, <clears throat> a book catalog with a strange title, Architecture Without Architects. The author, uh, Bernard Ludovsky, curated uh, these uh, images of uh, uh, architectures, architecture without architects in different countries, continents. And uh, that was in uh, MoMA, New York, 1963 or 64. And uh, <clears throat> in this book, one image uh, struck me. Uh, that was the uh, cliff dwellings of the Dogon in Mali. Uh, and uh, this image uh, uh, had a big impact on my uh, future because I always, uh, from that time on, I wanted to travel to Africa and discover these uh, architecture without architects. Uh, the opportunity came a uh, long time after this uh, discovery. In fact, I, I finished my studies in Lebanon, uh, architectural I got my diploma of architecture from uh, uh, Lebanese University, end of 1974. I had a scholarship for two years in Paris. And uh, in Paris, I was very uh, keen on having more knowledge about solar architecture and uh, earth architecture. At that time, <clears throat> After the oil embargo of 1973, uh, there was a kind of uh, uh, need to find new ways of uh, having a, a energy with the solar, uh, mir de trombe, and uh, etc. So, spent two years in Paris, and uh, in fact, having always this kind of obsession to to travel to Africa, I accepted the job in Ivory Coast, Abidjan, and uh, this is where I started my uh, career as a project manager. And after two years in Ivory Coast, 1978, I decided that it's time for an expedition. Here you can see uh, the car that I was using for my site visits. Uh, it was a Renault 4L, 4L, a very simple car, but strong enough. I had to do some reinforcements and some, I added the roof and uh, I put, uh, reinforced the, the bottom of the car and so on. So, and of course, uh, I had to, to find a map of uh, uh, West and North Africa. What you see on this map is the uh, the road that or the the crossing of Africa I did. And uh, also I had to uh, bring with me uh, beside uh, gas, water, food. I had to bring. Um, my photo gear, two Nikon F with lenses and uh, uh, Kodachrome uh, slides and Tri-X black and white. 
All this was ready uh, for this expedition, which we started in um, 12 March 1978. The expedition uh, uh, Duration was like three months from that time. And uh, we had to cross the whole uh, North and West Africa. I mean, we started in Abidjan and uh, uh, Abidjan, Korogo, Yamasukru, and uh, in the North, we, we discovered uh, this, uh, the Senufu villages, amazing architecture, simple. Here you can see on the on the left side the entrance of a Senufu village, and on the right side you have the silos, the granaries where they they uh, put the, the the harvest and secure them from uh, uh, animals and uh, rain. Um, so uh, the dwellings are very simple. Uh, using local materials and uh, ancestral uh, know-how. And uh, an amazing discovery was the, the priest uh, hut with a magical figurine on, on, on the uh, outer uh, skin of the, of the hut. Once we finished with the, with the Ivory Coast, <clears throat> We headed, uh, I headed to Mali and uh, to Mopti and from Mopti we went to Jenny. Here you can see Jenny. And uh, Jenny was a very nice city, not very big. It was like a sister city to Tombuktu. Given the fact that I had, I was driving a two wheel drive and not a four wheel drive, so I couldn't really um, uh, travel to Tombuktu, so that's why I decided to explore uh, a journey. And uh, like uh, I stayed like uh, three, four days in Jenny, uh, uh, and in Jenny uh, there was uh, this uh, the the Grand Friday Mosque, an amazing uh, building. It was. Um, uh, in mud, it it is considered the uh, still existing, of course, uh, it's a UNESCO heritage and considered one of the biggest mosques in Africa. Uh, so we documented the the building, uh, the uh, the different facade of this uh, amazing uh, project uh, building mosque. And speaking about mosque, during um, uh, uh, the expedition, uh, we, we uh, documented a lot of different typology of, of uh, what they call the Sudanese type of mosque, which is uh, earth architecture, in fact. Here you can see the probably the only uh, mosque in Africa was a circular plan. Uh, that was in Ivory Coast. And uh, other museum you can see in Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso, but there are many, many others types of mosque, of course. And uh, <clears throat> once we we finished uh, with uh, Jenny and the Grand Mosque, we headed north to Bandiagara uh, to explore the Dogon villages. The Dogon villages are a series of of uh, uh, earth architecture villages um, which are sheltered by uh, a cliff we had to climb the cliff uh, took us like one day to go up then half a day to go down and uh, the discovery of these uh, housing and uh, granaries was amazing and that was the image i saw in the book of uh, bernard Ludovsky. So I was very happy to, to be uh, in exploring these uh, villages, which, by the way, are very nice, very, very, uh, I would say, uh, convivial for people and uh, 
of the community. Uh, on the left right side, you can see uh, one village with a, a building on top, which is called the Toguna. This is where the old people, I mean the Lesage, uh, the, the wise people of the village, they meet uh, from time to time to discuss the uh, village matter. And uh, uh, so that was our uh, discovery of the Dogon architecture. The cosmogony of the Dogon is very rich. And uh, in fact, it impacted the, the, the way they, they built their uh, houses and also the way they, they have uh, these uh, baskets with uh, very simple shapes and uh, amazing uh, uh, masks and so on. Uh, after uh, Mali, uh, we crossed uh, to Burkina Faso, different architectures, uh, pottery uh, type of granaries, like what you can see on, on the right left side. Uh, also uh, dwellings uh, using uh, available materials from trees and branches and vegetation. Very beautiful shapes, simple and uh, very smart way of doing construction, a sustainable architecture in fact. Uh, after uh, Burkina Faso, we crossed very quickly Niger, which was not like very, very interesting. Uh, and uh, Niger is like the gate of the Sahara, the largest uh, desert uh, on earth. And so we started our crossing of the Sahara. Uh, here you can see the sand dunes. In fact, the Sahara is uh, different formations of frogs and sand dunes, huge sand dunes. And uh, <clears throat> with the Renault car, we had to cross pockets of sand. Uh, in fact, uh, I was stuck in one of these pockets and uh, I, I thought this was the end. But um, with a mirror, I was able to, from far to signal to a truck that we are stuck and uh, this, uh, the driver came and he saved us. He saved me, it was my, my wife. Uh, so, uh, and that was really, uh, uh, amazing uh, moment uh, because we thought we will end up <laughs> dying in the desert. Uh, in fact, uh, after we he managed to uh, to extract us from the, the sand pocket, uh, a, a sandstorm started uh, uh, and that was a horrible, uh, I mean, the whole horizon was black and the sand was so uh, quick, the, the speed of the sand was crazy. So we spent the night protecting ourselves uh, on top of the truck. And the car, our car was in the morning was full of sand everywhere, but we managed to survive this uh, sand storm. <clears throat> After uh, we, uh, we cleaned the car and so on. We headed to Taman Reset. Then from there, we went to the Mzab uh, villages or towns. And here you can see on the, on the left side, Gardaya, which is an amazing uh, city, the mosque, minaret, and the whole city with the colors and uh, the nice streets and also we visited one of the oldest mosques in, in Gardaia, apparently uh, visited by Le Corbusier. People say that in, it inspired them to, for Ranchon anyway. That was uh, our trip to, to uh, roughly Algeria. 
we we went up quickly to Algeria and from Algeria to Iran and to Morocco. And in fact, uh, in Morocco, uh, we crossed quickly the uh, imperial cities like Fez, Meknes, and Rabat because we wanted to to rest a few days in Casablanca, which we did. And from Casa, we went down to, uh, I mean, south to Marrakesh. Marrakesh uh, was an amazing discovery. The old town, the Jama al Fna, and uh, also the <clears throat> some interiors of uh, palaces and uh, different uh, features in, in, in Marrakesh. In fact, Marrakesh was the uh, gate of uh, South Morocco, and this is where we headed south, and uh, uh, we discovered uh, green valleys, like the Dra Valley, and uh, also some uh, desert-like uh, uh, places where we, we uh, encountered uh, uh, some very interesting dwellings. Uh, and what was nice about uh, South Morocco is the discovery of these Xar or kind of uh, citadel and uh, built with mud and stone in different uh, uh, landscapes you can see here uh, uh, some different uh, villages uh, and Xars in South Morocco. So that was our discovery of South Morocco. After that, we, uh, we went to, uh, we returned to north, uh, to the north, uh, to Gibraltar, and then across to Spain, uh, France uh, to Paris. This uh, uh, during this expedition, I I took like uh, more than uh, eighteen hundred photos, slides, and black and white, which enabled me to participate in this amazing exhibition in Paris, Des uh, Architectures en Terre, with Jean de Thiers in 1982 and uh, I donated some of my slides and photos to Centre Popour uh, and uh, one of my photos was published in, in this catalog. So that's that's my uh, expedition 1978 architecture without architects and uh, uh, today was uh, this uh, uh, kind of, of uh, uh, retour or source. I mean, return to to the to the uh, to what our ancestor built in, in uh, Africa and the Middle East. I think uh, there is a wealth of uh, sustainable solution that we can find in these architectures, and this is what Arcade uh, is was. Uh, uh, created to do and to research this richness we find in, in uh, these architecture without architects. Thank you very much.